Hi, everybody. My name is John DiPietro, and welcome to this special presentation by the Massachusetts Pan Pandas Legislative Coalition. As I said, my name is John DiPietro, and like many of you that are watching this presentation, you have a personal stake in what's going on at the State House right now. I've got a granddaughter that's afflicted with this horrible disorder. And tonight we want to present an update on House Bill 947, which is in progress right now, in process at the State House. And that's an act relative to insurance coverage for PANS and PANDAS. This bill seeks to provide coverage for doctor recommended therapies for children suffering from PANS and PANDAS. The bill puts patient treatment in the hands of doctors and medical professionals and not in the hands of insurance companies. Today, severely ill children wait indefinitely for appropriate medical intervention due to the gap in coverage for immune therapy in Massachusetts. And ladies and gentlemen, right now is the time to make that change. Joining me this evening is in no particular order because we have no idea where we're seeing each other on the screen is Representative Josh Cutler, who um, is right now at the State House working hard. He broke in and got in through the uh, security guards. Yep. <laughs> Welcome, Representative. It. And nice, um, we have from the medical community, Dr. Melissa McCormick, a pediatrician who specializes in pans and pandas and is part of our advocacy group. And two of the hardest working people I know, Sheila Gouch and Jennifer Vitelli, who are co-leaders in the Mass Pan Pandas Legislation Coalition. And here's a new term, folks, momvacates for all things <laughs> and, and pandas. So with that being said, and everybody introduced, what we do want to say, and we agreed on this beforehand, is that we're not going to dilly-dally tonight. We know that everybody's time is valuable, and we want to get right to uh, um, Representative Cutler. And uh, by the way, Representative Cutler, five years ago, was one of the co-sponsors of this bill when it was brought forward. And this time he's the lead sponsor on the bill, the House Bill 947. And, and uh, Representative, can you kind of tell us, uh, number one, because of this COVID-19 situation, what's the status of operation at the State House? And then give us a then, now, and future. Sure. Uh, you can cut out me a little bit there, but I think I get the question. Okay. Oh. So uh, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you all so much for doing this. And, and I want to just concur. The, the pandas, uh, pans folks have been so dedicated and, and relentless and uh, uh, in, in a good way. And it's really appreciated. Thank you for all of your advocacy. Uh, everyone should know that. And, and it does have an impact. Um, so again, um, you know, we're uh, obviously, I, I believe it or not, I'm not actually at the State House right now. This is a background. Uh, but the State House is, is still operating. We, state government is moving forward. Uh, we are meeting virtually. Uh, we have formal sessions in the House now. We've had three already, uh, virtually, remote, remote voting and so forth. So things are starting to, I wouldn't say get back to normal, but you know, starting to move, move forward back towards um, you know, traditional lawmaking in, in some respects. Um, right now, um, you know, we're still grappling with the budgetary impacts of COVID-19. And, and so you know, that's taking a lot of bandwidth, I would say, um, for, for, you know, the primary uh, focus right now. But I suspect as we you know, continue to move forward, um, we're trying to make sure that bills like this um, stay on the radar uh, with with uh, with our colleagues and with the public, and um, so that's why the work that you're doing, you know, the show tonight, but in the work that you're doing generally speaking is so important. Um, I don't want to monopolize the conversation, but I want to kind of give a quick update on where we stand as of now. Uh, and if people have questions, feel free to jump in and, and interrupt uh, any time. So um, great, you know, obviously a lot of progress has been made. The bill has gotten farther already than it has in, in necessarily in years past. Um, we had um, a favorable, what's called a favorable report, which is basically just a legislative thumbs up from the Joint Committee on Financial Services. Uh, and that is a key sort of roadblock or hurdle that a lot of bills never get passed. Um, you know, there's 5,000 plus bills filed every session and only a small fraction of them even get passed, you know, the primary committee. So that was a really nice uh, positive step. And we, you know, we thank uh, you guys were, were great in terms of that and Chairman Murphy and and everyone uh, on the legislative side. So that was a key step. The bill now sits before the Healthcare Financing Committee, which is um, sort of the equivalent of our Ways and Means Committee. It's sort of the gatekeeper for anything that's healthcare related uh, that has a fiscal impact. 
And so that's, you know, that's a very key uh, committee. And so the bill is, is still before the, that committee. Uh, they have a deadline coming up uh, just about a month away to make a determination on the bill. And that would be either a yay, nay, or sort of a pocket veto, which would be putting it to study. Um, so we're obviously hoping that we get a, a favorable report. And, and that's, that's why, sort of been the focus recently. And that's why what we're talking about tonight does have an absolute time deadline to it. And, and this, yes. as both Sheila and, uh, and Jennifer will say, um, let's get to work on this. So anyway, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, thank you for interrupting me because that's very important to say, even though we're kind of in a, in a bit of a holding pattern from a big picture point of view, um, you know, this, the, the, this deadline is, is approaching. And so, you know, it's possible that deadline could be extended, but I wouldn't want to count on that. Um, so it is important between now and in June 19th that we, you know, especially reach the members of that committee. Uh, and obviously, you know, I know the, the team is well aware of who that is and we'll get that out to everybody, uh, but also just legislators in general. Um, because okay. we want to make sure this is kept high on the radar screen. Representative, what is the best way, what makes the most impact on you as a representative? Uh, is it phone calls? Is it emails? Is it office visits? Is it um, cupcakes sent to your kid's school or, to, or what is it? Sure. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a big sugar guy, but no. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a great question. And I have to say, it's, it's a little bit different for everybody. Uh, I'm kind of a, a nerdy high tech guy and I don't, you know, I don't mind getting emails. I like to get emails. Some people don't read their own emails. So it really depends on the legislator. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say in general, the more personal the connection, the better. Okay. Uh, if you can have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I remember when Jennifer and, and Sheila first reached out to me and, you know, having the face-to-face -face, um, when it's possible, it may not always be possible right now, but the virtual face-to-face -face is, uh, is very important. Obviously, the more personal the connection, the better. So, you know, the form emails, you know, I would rank sort of lower on the on the list. And then the more personal emails or text message or phone calls or, you know, somehow face to face or virtually uh, are, are more impactful in, in my view. Some folks may have different points of view, but I think that's. Is there a specific date that has been uh, put forth as to when the vote would take place? I know you said within a period of time, but is so right now, the deadline for that committee reporting out our bill is June 19th. Okay. Now, so things I will say are, are a bit in flux. Um, typically, in our session, we have sort of a hard stop July 31st. And any, you know, uh, formal sessions end at that point. And basically, you know, legislators have to go back to their districts and kind of run for re-election and, and so forth. Um, this year, because of what's happened, that's thrown our whole schedule totally out the window. Uh, normally, if for instance, we would already have a budget by now, and we mm -hmm. didn't really, you know, we're still halfway through that process because of what's happening. So that is a, a sort of a double-edged sword. The good news in all that is we probably have a little more time than we normally would have. Had, the, had we been on a normal schedule, we would probably have already passed the reporting deadline, and we'd be, you know, up against the, the clock, really. But because right. of this, we do have a little bit more time, not that we want to dilly-dally, of course. <laughs> Great. But so so thank you so much. And let's move to our medical yeah. expert, Dr. McCormick. And doctor, um, this COVID-19, is it that we've been hearing so much about? Social distancing, COVID-19, flatten the curve. Is COVID-19 relative to this bill? If so, and how? Uh, okay, so it's absolutely relative. Um, you know, we know uh, PANS PANDAS is an entity that um, it's a disorder related to um, an aberrant immune response to infections. And, um, you know, COVID obviously is a, quite a significant infection um, that can trigger the same response that can cause flares of symptoms and children with this, this disorder. So if you compare it to something like uh, influenza, we've already demonstrated that COVID-19 is uh, more virulent, more contagious. Uh, it just seems to hit every system in our body. Um, and it's you know, pretty well known that seasonal influenza itself um, can be quite a significant precipitant of increased neuropsychiatric symptoms in, in patients with this disorder. So if flu can do it, um, then absolutely COVID can do it. Um, so that's a yeah, number one concern. And then coronavirus itself within the family of coronaviruses and 
uh, COVID-19, though, you know, it's pretty early on in the, in the life of this virus, so we don't have as many extended studies, but from past studies with coronavirus, there uh, are definitive neurotropic um, aspects, meaning that the viruses themselves can directly infect the immune system and trigger neuropsychiatric symptoms, and um, in addition, just their secondary um, immune response to fighting the infection can stimulate the same cascade of, of immunologic responses that lead to symptoms in PANS, PANDAS spectrum of disorders. So um, we definitely we have two aspects of, of this infection that can really uh, hit these kids. Um, not to mention that the psychologic stressor of dealing with a pandemic in itself uh, can affect the brain, make the blood-brain barrier leaky, and predispose these kids also to flares. So um, it, it's really, in uh, in these secondary sequelae can last for years. It's not just a fear of what's happening now. Um, again, looking at past studies of, of coronaviruses of the past, including the MERS and the SARS-CoV-1, there are definite, um, you know, significant reports of increase in neuropsychiatric symptoms up to, you know, four plus years after the infection. So, um, okay. this, so there is, this is a concerning time. There is certainly significance with yeah. what's going on in our particular issue. Uh, and maybe, you know, if there's any good news out of this whole thing is that maybe it opens the eyes and ears of people that are not necessarily pans, pandas people into what this immune issues are and, uh, you know, makes people aware of them. And uh, let's look at it from a positive thing. And speaking of positive, let's, let's run up to Sheila for just a second. Um, you and Jennifer have been pit bulls for lack of a better word. Um, and you, not only the research you do regarding, you know, what's been going on in Massachusetts, but you've told me that there's activity throughout the country on bills that are similar to this. Sheila, name, name some states. Uh, what's going on in other places that if Massachusetts is going to be the leader, um, we're turning into the follower? So we're totally the leader because we were the first ones out with the CHIA report. So the cost health care analysis report in, was it 2014 or 15? 15. 15. Um, so that report, which actually documented um, kind of the cost of PANS PANDAS, which was truly minimal, um, that came out and that helped lead the way and pave the way for the other states who have already passed their bills. So there are now seven because Maryland actually just went through during this crisis. So Maryland passed their bill uh, and others, which I will trip up if I try to say all of them. Um, but well, I've got there are them seven. Down. There are also nine other. Oh, yep. I've got them written Please. down. You want me to read them? It, you want to say them? Well, I'll sure. say it because, you know, and I should say, well, Jennifer, do you have them in front of you? Because you're the one who came up with this info. If you have them in front there. Um, Arkansas, Delaware, Illinois, Indiana, Maryland, Minnesota, and... Maryland. Yeah. Oh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yeah. 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 And New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, that have passed. And then there's nine additional states that also yeah. have a bill. Um, filed right now. Okay. In those other states, you know, Iowa, Michigan, Missouri, uh, New York, Ohio, Oklahoma, are not necessarily known as as medical uh, centers like, like Boston is. Um, and my contention from a layman's point of view is if they're doing it in those places, then we should be uh, having the same opportunities here. Well, I think we've got pretty amazing <laughs> now. We have one of the biggest awareness days back in October, and we have Josh, who's yeah. been truly amazing since he picked this up. Um, and we're just, I feel like everything we hear is great, and I think we are definitely still an incredibly relevant bill, especially based on what Dr. McCormick just shared with us and, and kind of what we all know, like this... Um, it makes a lot of sense that our bill is still incredibly relevant during these really scary times. So exactly. So Jennifer, I refer to you as the action person. 
because when you want stuff done, not, nothing to do, nothing taking away from Sheila, but but well, Jennifer, okay. <laughs> um, what can people do? What do you want people that are watching this presentation to do um, in these next few weeks? Well, to reiterate, you know, what Josh said, we just need to continue to keep the momentum on. Um, our state representatives and senators um, need to reach out. They, and I, as Josh had said, and what we had kept hearing over and over again is that personal story. So if you have a, you know, if you've been touched by pandas, pans, whether it's your relative, grandchild, or perhaps you have a coworker that works with you and you've watched the struggle that you've gone through, or an employee who's like, you know, work or been out of work because of, you know, due to this illness. It, if you could contact your representative and senator um, and pass along that story, it would mean a lot. And um, what we've done on the mass, uh, well, let me just make sure I have truth is Pans, pandas, pandas legislation. Yeah. Legislation Facebook page. Um, we will have we have a fact sheet up there. We also have a link to how to find your state legislator. It's very easy, but there's a link there in case you don't know who they are. Um, and I was going to ask Josh, are representatives and senators meeting virtually yeah. with constituents at we this are, time? We are, yeah. Absolutely. Is that an option? Uh, I have a okay. actually a fairly busy agenda. Oh, with uh, okay. That happens. Our committees have you know, virtual hearings. We're having virtual session um so yeah absolutely yeah but contact and i think that what, what I've learned, oh, i was just gonna say what i've personally learned in this process is that it see it's kind of scary and intimidating right to think that you're going to call your senator or representative and people tend to shy away from it we, there hasn't been an not office that we've i'm wearing walked, shorts right now we're not yeah. scary <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the, i feel like there hasn't been an office that we've walked into or talked to where they haven't really been like super receiving and they're interested and they want to know and especially when it, it involves children and um so don't hesitate to pick up that phone or and reach out and make that personal contact it really <laughs> we've received is that it's really made a difference with this bill that, that there is like some momentum because of that okay. uh, yeah I could, uh, just echo that point if i could quickly you know uh, you know sadly we do hear a, a lot of stories about complex medical issues you know especially with children and, and they're heartbreaking and you know it's you're fighting you know there's other rare diseases and other disorders and so it's important you know that we reach everybody and, and keeping a loud voice i think that is important i know it's it, it, it can be a challenging but it is important to be kind of the squeaky wheel and mm -hmm. to, to make sure they understand how important this is and, and to hear the stories because I I can tell you back in 2000 I think 13 when I was a freshman rep I um, uh, sat in on a hearing and heard a couple of stories and I still remember those now and that's partially what kind of led me to be here you know and when you see the kids and the you know, I think <laughs> everyone would agree that in this situation it's 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 like any other long-term illness it's not just the patient itself that's clinically being treated it is the entire family and the extended family and uh, even the classmates in school um, that are impacted by it and i'm sure dr mccarthy dr uh, I called you called dr mccarthy but it's not dr mccormick, McCormick. um called worse. you know being, <laughs> being a pediatrician um you know that has is this a new illness or is this something that's been around but just never got any attention oh it's been around it's probably been around since the you know 15th century um but uh yeah no it's been around for a long time as a matter of fact that um the the spanish flu epidemic of 1918 um caused uh an, an entity called encephalitis lethargica which we now know that's it for anybody who is interested. It's the awakenings um, entity from the movie. It's a Parkinson-like syndrome. And we now know that's sort of a prototypical basal ganglia encephalitis, which is the mechanism of pans pandas. So um, it, you know, we've had this, it's been around for a long time, not well understood. Um, the larger spectrum of um, outside of just strep infections, the whole PANS mechanism um, is there. It just hasn't been well described because of variations in how we well, have treated illnesses. You know, through social media and um, the way people communicate today, we've got so much more power than we did 
just 10, 15 years ago. And it, even Josh would, would agree that, you know, from the time that he started, uh, what, in 2013 or so at the State House, um, or 15, whatever, um, it, it, it certainly is a lot easier to communicate now. So with that being said, um, Jennifer, the if people want to find out more facts and figures because they're 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 written people, they people like to see things, um, yes. they can go to the Mass Pants Pandas Facebook page and all the Correct. facts about who went and where will all be there, right? There'll be a fact sheet, there's an information sheet, talking points, um, how to find their legislator, yeah, tons of yeah, well lots of info. And they can email us as well at mass pandas oh shoot what is it uh, <laughs> i'll have that up there too i'm gonna have that up there <laughs> so if we if there's a question that they have um we they can email us as well great folks we want to thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedule and um, we also want to remind everyone that time is of the essence and if you really want to make a difference in your life and in the lives of many other people now is the time to pick up the phone, get on the computer, get on the laptop or whatever, but now is the time to uh, um, help these kids. And with that being said, um, we'll have a lot more of that information below this YouTube um, document as well. And um, Representative Cutler and um, Dr. McCormick and Drs. McCormick, <laughs> Jennifer, it, it, wait a minute, wait, we got two Jennifers. We got two McCormicks, huh? No relation. No relation, I just realized that. I'm calling her McCarthy or whatever, but um, whatever. We were going so well and then I fell apart at the end. Um, no, it's we great. Were, great, we thank were, you, John, yeah, thank you very much. You're an amazing grandfather and no. yeah, your family's lucky, thank you. Great, so let's tell everybody, let's get, huh? let's get rolling everybody and um, Let's, let's get rid of this thing and let's get this bill passed and move on. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great evening.